Hey guys, lovely to have you here. Today I'm going to be going over the yarn that I bought in February. We're going to be taking a look at the details of the yarn, my first impressions of the yarn, and the projects that I have in mind for them. So stick around if you're interested. This video is a little bit of a taste test for myself since I have a really big winter haul video that I want to put out there and when I told y'all I bought a lot of yarn oh honestly I should have bought more <laughs> but anyways here you can see me working on a granny hex cardi using loops and threads facets in the colorway spectrum and I really enjoy working with it but let's move on to the yarns so first up, we have a small haul from Hobby, and if there's anything you need to know about me, it's that I, I'm set for Hobby sales, okay? <laughs> you do not have to tell me twice. Now, this haul contains two skeins of Rainbow Cotton 8-4 print and eight skeins of Rainbow Cotton 8-4 solid. I'm going to start with the print. So this is 100% cotton in size 1, so fingering weight, super fine. Each skein is 50 grams with a length of 170 meters. The colorway that I chose was Agnes, aka Color 11, on their website. I really wanted something to contrast with the other colors that I had chosen, which, you know, you'll see in a bit. I wanted something with green tones. And while this does have them in sort of the teal aspect, I do feel there's more blue tones. I won't say I'm disappointed in what I chose because <laughs> I love Hobby and they don't disappoint me very often, but I did want my green tones. And in the images, it does look like there is more green, so I could have gotten away with not buying green skeins specifically for this project. But, you know, regardless, I love how this works up in the waddle stitch per the example. So I can't complain too much about it. And you know what? I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make it work. So putting that aside, we're moving on to 8-4 solid. The first two I'm going to show are Wisteria and Lavender. Had them switched for a moment. Really lovely colors. I really enjoy them. I think a person, you can see that the shades are a bit more similar with lavender though. You can see these hints of blue tones, regardless, beautiful colors. You can begin to see it here with wisteria and lavender and you'll see it with the other six colors I chose, but I was very purposeful in choosing colors that I felt were lighter and darker shades of the same color in order to continue providing that contrast to Agnes. But on to the next set. Oh, I love these. These, I think, are my favorite of the total 10 skeins. And I'll probably find another project to use these for. Absolutely would. Here we have Plum and Aubergine. Again, like with the other skeins, these are 50 grams with a length of 170 meters, 100% cotton in size 1. Now we're moving on to a bit more of those blue greenish tones, predominantly blue. We have petrol blue and dark teal, which you could argue that they're very similar and you wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> you would not be wrong. And again, this is why I wanted more green tones in the Agnes colorway, just because I wanted something to contrast these blues. They look to be, I mean, they're in the same family, so I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to get more of a contrast. But if y'all are interested, I will keep y'all updated on this. As for the final two skeins that I got for a solid, you can make the same argument we just did for the Petro Blue and Dark Teal. But I will fight. I will fight for this one. I will defend myself. We've got Royal Blue and we've got Cobalt Blue. <laughs> Okay, now, listen, before y'all try to fight me on this, I know that the royal blue and the cobalt blue are just too similar, but I'm a Critical Role fan, okay? Look at my dice. I'm a Critical Role fan. 
and I love the Mighty Nine, so this cobalt blue, baby, is here to stay. I also just didn't like any of the other blues. I thought they were too pale in comparison for the vision that I had for this project. So again, I'll make it work. Don't worry about it. I'll make it work. <laughs> As for the project lineup, this is a very exciting project for me. It is the first time that I have a friend that's having a bebe. These are the neutral colors that she chose with her partner and I will be surprising them with a baby blanket. It'll be worked corner to corner in the waddle stitch. I thought I was going to need to buy more yarn, but as I've been working on this project since I filmed this, girl, no, we're good. <laughs> My girlies in the group chat can tell you just how much time I spent on the drafting of these colors and the designs, but you know what? I think I chose great. Do y'all agree? Do y'all disagree? I'll probably be posting this on my Instagram anyways. Now, purchase against my will, but you'll hear no complaints from me. We have the collaboration between Teal Yarn Crafts and Michigan Fine Yarns. If you guys didn't already know, Tony is hosting a crochet along event right after her immersive three week class on Tunisian crochet for beginners. If you want more information, I'm going to list it in the description below. You have until March 25th if you want to partake in the Cal event, but keep in mind, it's a pretty penny. But I'm going to defend it 100%. You're getting yarn, you're getting an exclusive pattern for the Olivia Shaw getting access to the private Facebook group during these three week period, all while supporting a local yarn store owned by a BIPOC family and Teal Yarn Crafts, a black woman owned business. So for me, 100% worth it. This was a lovely combination of yarns color wise that I probably would not have chosen for myself. And I really do appreciate the amount of options that were given for this shawl. I think there were a total of 20, if not more, kits. As of March 21st, 26 out of 27 of these kits have been restocked. Remember, March 25th is the cutoff for this, and if I haven't uploaded this video up before then, well, I'm blaming Stardew Valley 1.6. <laughs> Regardless, the yarn itself is from Koigu which is then being sold by Michigan Fine Yarns. You can see here, Koigu. I chose Kit 9, which consists of these beautiful variegated yarns in purples, pinks, and light grays. The fiber content is 100% merino wool in size one, so a super fine or fingering weight. Each skein is 50 grams with a length of 160 meters. I guess it goes without saying that my project for this yarn is definitely Tony's Olivia Shawl, which is the cow project for this collaboration. Y'all, I saw her Instagram post and immediately was, where do I find this shawl? Where is she posting the pattern? When is she posting the pattern? It was a need. You could not have held me back from making this purchase, okay? It was going to happen. It was inevitable. Now, if you guys want to help me with the order of the colors for this shawl, please do. I am struggling. The deep purple is beautiful. I just, I don't know what to do because color-wise, it makes sense to have the purples and pinks in the middle or towards the end because I'm not a big fan of gray. I don't want it to be the highlight of the piece. However this turns out though, it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> The next and last purchase is something I am super excited for. I, uh, doing my best to not giggle, I purchased this yarn from the Corner of Craft, aka Chromatic Yarns, and these yarns are inspired by the book Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. See, this is how you know I love a book. I have a beautiful edition. I have Homeboy's signature. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> If you know anything about me, it's that I adore this book, and I'm on a mission to read every single cozy fantasy book out there. So, when I learned that Hannah, the owner of Corner of Craft, was a fan of Dungeons and & Dragons and Critical Role, I zoomed over to her website, okay? I was speedrunning. I was flash up in this bitch. Lo and behold, this yard. 
So I got three of the colorways. I got the colorway cinnamon roll, which I find really pretty and I like the darker tones of brown that are throughout it as opposed to the lighter ones, lovely regardless. I got exotic bean water, really pretty, oh, I love brown tones, I really do, I'm a fan. And then I got the prettiest in my opinion based off my purchase, Scoverstone. I love the shades of red, dark orange going throughout this. I got six skeins total, two of each colorway. She gave me some tea. How cute. So, <laughs> I will say, I'm letting y'all know, I'm letting y'all know, okay, a lot of the colorways in the collection are limited since it was released several months ago and I was, I was, I was late. I was late to the game. I really wanted what in the eight hells is coffee in boucle. No, sold out, sold out. My heart broke a little and it still kind of hurts, but alas, we move on. The fiber content is 100% super wash merino wool in her base, a boucle merino DK. Each skein is 100 grams with a length of 220 meters and it is a size 3 yarn. It is my first time owning and working with boucle yarn so this is absolutely at the top of my to-do list. I feel like a little kid, you know, it's a little bit of a Christmas present for me. To pair off with the cozy vibes, I will be working up these six skeins into the Glocka Shrug from Expression Fiber Arts. Now, I've got a question for y'all because since I've never worked with boucle yarn, how does it hold up to pilling? I can't find much information online, on Reddit, haven't found anything. And also, boucle and mohair? Do y'all like that combination? I don't think I'll be doing that for this project, but generally, I don't know, I might want to attempt it at some point. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe. Also, if you don't want to go searching for when I drop my winter yarn haul video and I don't know, maybe some monthly book reviews. Your girl loves to read clearly, so I hope you'll have a lovely day. Thank you so much for watching.